You've witnessed an historic summer of sport from the edge of your seat, and the time has come to say, I was there. This November, the EMC tests. Scotland take on Tonga and Aberdeen, and two of the best teams in the world, New Zealand and South Africa, come to Murrayfield. Tickets from £15. Scotland, up close, in the flesh, and on home turf. Welcome back to a new Scotsman Rugby Show and as you can see the All Blacks are in town. We'll hear from them later on as well as our usual roundup of club, pro and international rugby ahead of a cracking feast of rugby for November. Scotsman Rugby Show is back after an October break and in a new fortnightly format. In this show, we have club, professional and international rugby. We hear from Kelly Brown, the new Scotland captain, as well as some new All Blacks. And we hear from Wayne Smith, the former All Blacks coach, on what he thinks of Scottish rugby. But let's start with a look back on some exciting club rugby from last month. We're at the halfway point in the league season and in the Premiership it's Ayr who lead the way, only beaten by Curry so far and a seven-point lead at the top but second place Gala have two games in hand. Curry are third with champions Melrose in fourth but with four losses in nine matches it's going to be an uphill task for them in the run-in. The National League at this stage is looking like a three-horse race. Watsonians five points clear at the top. Their only defeat so far was to second-place Glasgow Hawks, who have since dropped points against Hoyk, Stumel and the return game against Watsonians. Hoyk are currently going well. They've got home games against Hawks and the Myerside outfit in the second part of the season. It's been a tough month for Edinburgh rugby, with embarrassing defeats to Saracens and Munster in the Heineken Cup and a wretched attempt to try and find another league win. Glasgow have been more competitive, but they still lost to Northampton and Ulster in Europe, and so Scottish interest in that competition is all but over. 
The good news is that Glasgow's five-try win over the Dragons last week set a new club record in the Pro 12 of six straight victories. And Neil Back, the new Edinburgh forwards coach, believes his side will be firing when they return to action later this month. They will need to to get up that league table. On the face of it, you know, the losses we've incurred um, compared to the wins, you know, if you just look at that, it looks disappointing, but I've seen... Personally, massive progress. Um, we've got a really committed squad. Um, the, the challenge is, is to, to to get us to make better decisions under pressure. Six game or six games have been within a score, so we're just not getting that bounce of the ball, a bit of luck, and, and taking our chances. And hopefully, when we break that, um, we we'll get on the, the win, and that will kick us on. Well, Heineken Cup was a great learning experience for our players. I thought we showed parts um, of our, our best rugby, especially down in Northampton in the opening 34 minutes. But we learned harsh lessons in both those, both those games that we, we can't set off against two very good teams in Northampton and Ulster, um, how we control momentum shifts, how we can use the ball better, um, and also how we can kick on when we've got the momentum with us. So we've all learned as a group there. Disappointing that we lost both games, especially the one at home in front, of our, in front of our fans, but it was a great reaction over in Treviso to get that win on a, on a wet night against a very good side. We knew Treviso would be tough opposition. And then to build that up here with a, with a real solid performance at home, our best home performance of the season, and it's always good to see tries. But now Murrayfield is preparing for an exciting month of international rugby. The stars of New Zealand and South Africa will be in this theatre here at Murrayfield over the next two weekends. And then Scotland head to Aberdeen, to face Tonga. But what chance do Scotland have? Let's hear from Kelly Brown, the Scotland captain, on his honour at taking over as Scotland captain and his desires to make history, before we gauge the mood in the All Blacks camp. As a captain, you've got to lead by example, but it's also my role to make sure that everyone else in the squad knows exactly what is expected of them and feels that they are valued by the squad and if everyone knows the roles and does them as best as they can there's no reason why we can't put in a really good performance. I think for us it's all about performance you know we know it's going to be incredibly hard but if we all know our roles and nail our roles and one of the big things for me is work incredibly hard. I want us to be a side that's never outworked and a side that every time we go out and play makes the nation proud. The squad's in a really, really good place but as I said in terms of confidence it's all about roles and so it's all about all the guys really knowing their role and knowing that everyone else around them knows the roles and if we can do that we can start to build a real sense of confidence. We're, we're coming off a pretty poor performance um, we've spent a few days sort of uh, searching for answers about why, why we had a bit of a hiccup at Brisbane and really our focus at this stage of the week's quite frankly been on, on ourselves we, we believe we've got a couple of steps that we've got to climb to get to the levels that we want um, when it comes to who's in the Scottish team, you know, we, we've got a pretty good idea um, who to expect and we've had a lot of time looking at them just like they have with us and, you know, quite frankly, we, we, they, they play with a lot of enthusiasm. We, you know, they, they're, they're a team that holds on to the ball really, really well so we know we're going to have to defend well and, you know, they've brought a lot of line speed into their game defensively so regardless who's on the park, we know that formula and we're going to have to be very sharp to break it down. Challenge is, is the right word. Everyone wants to challenge themselves against the best and there's no doubt New Zealand are the best at the moment and they have been for, for some time. So they're the team everyone wants to beat and we're no different. Can Scotland beat them? Of course we can. We could beat everyone. You know, you you never go on a pitch believing you can't beat someone because then you've lost already. So how do you beat them? How do you beat them? We're going to have to play better than we've ever played before. You know, all of us basically. Um, you know... We're going to have to make the game uncomfortable for New Zealand and, and uh, absolutely ensure we don't make any mistakes. One man with great insight into the all-black mind is Wayne Smith. He stood down after reaching that holy grail of a World Cup with Graham Henry and Steve Hansen last year. 
but last month he took time out to come to Scotland and share his ideas with pro, club and schools and youth coaches. And he tells us now what he thinks of Scottish rugby and what he expects from the All Blacks this weekend. I like what I've seen with the coaches in terms of the work they do, um, their openness. You know, it's not easy to have someone come in and, and you know, mentor them or share ideas, but I found them to be curious. Um, they definitely work hard. Um, they're taking a lot of responsibility because there's a lot of expectations and, you know, not everything's going well in terms of results, but um, they're working through that. And uh, so I, that, it's been interesting to me. I, th I think there's a high quality of coach here. I've been really impressed with the community coaches that I've had on Monday nights in Glasgow and Edinburgh. I think the level of questioning and the work that I got them doing, they were, they were very good. And lastly, I think the players I found are totally engaged in what they're doing and I've, I've worked with the leadership group at Glasgow and here and uh, found them bright, um, pretty academic a lot of them, um, committed to, to taking some responsibility and and perhaps being more involved in terms of um, presenting to the team, um, doing the analysis and helping the coaches out there. And I think there was some exciting times, I think, ahead from what I've seen. So what you've seen from Scottish Rugby, you've talked about there being promise, hope. Where, where is that coming from? You, how hopeful would you be if you were in this side of the world? Well, it's got to have what it takes to compete in the world stage still. Well, what I've seen is a lot of the players are smart and tough. And it's a good combination. You know, and, and um, perhaps in the past, um, the coaching style, I don't know, I mean, I'm making assumptions here, but I think it's been pretty instruc instructional and, um, and a lot of block training. By that, I mean a lot of unopposed training. Um, whereas I'm seeing a movement towards a bit more questioning. You know, you've got to question your players to get self-awareness and you got, they're the ones that have got to solve the problems and and find the composure and analyse the opposition because they're the ones that are going to have to win the game on the weekend. So um, getting them more involved in that and, and increasing their game understanding and awareness and getting total alignment between what you want to do as a coach and what the team actually wants to do is critical. And I've seen, seen a lot more work being done in that area. So hence, you know, I, I, I think it is exciting. Um, you haven't got a big player base and, you know, the under-20 players, for example, who come back from the tournament, you might only have eight or nine or ten of those going to pro franchises. It's a long time before some of them come through. Mm -hmm. Compare that to New Zealand where we've got five professional super rugby teams and uh, 14 ITM Cup teams. They get opportunities straight away, hence there are three 20-year-olds in the All Blacks, or there were this year. Um, so, you know, finding solutions to those issues, I think, uh, is going to be important going forward. But, but you know, I think there's, there's good recognition here of what needs to be done, and Graham Lowe's clearly had a big effect on that. And we finish this week with our five quick questions of Scottish legends. And in the hot seat is Kenny Milne, the former Scotland hooker. I think sheer nerves and being petrified. It was uh, against Wales at home uh, at Murrayfield, and I remember I didn't play particularly well. Wales had a big, tall second row guy, and I think I hit him for most of the line outs I threw in. And I remember we're leading 19-3 at half time, and thinking, well, this is my first and last international. At least it looks as though we're going to win. And fortunately for me, the selectors. Uh, uh, had faith with me and gave me a few more shots, so I was quite fortunate to be lucky. Boyhood hero would be Andy Irvin. Uh, I think he was an absolute inspiration and a genius. He coached me. Uh, he taught me that uh, the value of space. He taught me when it was on to, to go for something and when it wasn't on. And sometimes you can be five yards from your opponent's line and it's not the right thing to go for the try. Sometimes you can be five yards from your own line and it is the right thing to move the ball and go for the try. And that was you know, one of the great things Andy Irvin taught me. Obviously there's been some great uh, internationals probably uh, playing against France in Paris when we, we beat them after many years of disappointment. The Grand Slam obviously has special memories, but actually it's a club game against Melrose where Heriots were 
had to win the match to avoid relegation and Melrose were Premier One champions and we went down to the Green Yards and against all odds got a victory which meant that Heriots retained their first division status. Probably domestically uh, a guy Gary Callender I uh, ended up replacing him in the Scotland side but domestically he was strong, a very skilled hooker, not, uh, not a buzz bomb in the loose like Colin Deans was but every scrum you had to work uh, very very hard to win your own ball. I suppose it goes back to my boyhood hero as well uh, or it'll be a close one between my elder brother and my boyhood hero Andy Irvin. Uh, obviously had a huge amount of respect and uh, uh, time for my big brother Ian but I think for just the sheer enthusiasm for the game of rugby whether at training it was doing a 50 yard sprint Andy was the ultimate competitor he'd want to beat you in a 50 yard sprint he'd want to win any game he ever played against you That's it for our first fortnightly show join us again just after South Africa have left these shores in case you're wondering what this is Look up Movember and see if you can donate a pound to help cancer charities. Better still, grow your own and send in some pictures of moustaches through Movember. That's it for this week. Enjoy your rugby. You've witnessed an historic summer of sport from the edge of your seat, and the time has come to say, I was there. This November, the EMC Tests. Scotland take on Tonga and Aberdeen, and two of the best teams in the world, New Zealand and South Africa, come to Murrayfield. Tickets from £15. Scotland, up close, in the flesh, and on home turf.